Hi, Mike from RMT family here. It's another beautiful day here in Montana. Uh, super sunny and will get pretty hot for us as we're acclimated to 40 and 50 degrees. Um, and we'll be hitting 80s, maybe 90s even today with uh, rain coming in later. We'll have some thunderstorms and some high humidity. So it'll be pretty painful for us. But anyway, we got some projects today. Um, as we are using stock panels, these are economy stock panels, relatively cheap, but we just keep our sheep in. So uh, we don't deal with cattle or horses in those panels. So the economy panels work just fine, but we have to add on this hog fencing here to it otherwise the sheep get out either under or through the panels <clears throat> um, these hog fencing panels they're 16 feet long our stock panels are only 12 feet long so we got to cut a four foot section off and then we attach the hog panels with hose clamps and we use a total of six hose clamps to attach one hawk panel to the livestock panel. And as you can see, we got some green ones and some red ones. We bought the green ones initially, and then later we bought some more, and they were available in red, so we just bought red, uh, but they're exactly the same panel. And so <clears throat> when you got a 16 foot hawk panel and you get four feet off, you obviously got a four foot section left. If you do that three times, you get another 12 feet. And so what I have been doing, as you can see right here, I just welded these sections together right there. So rather than purchasing another panel and just throwing the four foot sections away well the three four foot sections together and made another panel out of it and that's what we're going to do today I got six sections left that I cut off and we're gonna weld those together so that we can make two more panels complete to be used for the sheep we got three stock panels left and uh, two of those we'll be using today to put hog panels on after I weld that together. So here we are at my shop. As you can tell, it's not really a shop. It's basically a roof and that's it. Um, that's all we got to deal with. So. Um, all our equipment is covered but it's outside basically all year long and today we're going to be using this little welder right here it's from harbor freight a vulcan omnipro 220 so this one can work on 110 or 220 obviously if you can <clears throat> put 220 to it then you can uh, weld thicker metal and go a little longer um, on the duty cycle than with 110. I had this machine for about two or three years now. Um, it works pretty darn good. Surprisingly great actually. Um, as I've been using it on a 100 foot long extension cord out here which is not really recommended it's a heavy-duty extension cord um, and it works fine I've been welding multiple things not just these skinny panels I did some pretty heavy welding on our tractor with it and this machine just works great you probably can see the greenish yellowish on this machine this is due to all the pollen <clears throat> we had so it is spring it's allergy season for a lot of people up here and everything gets covered in this greenish yellow um, 
several times during spring so there's not even a need or it's not even there's no reason to clean this off because as soon as we clean it off it'll come back here uh, in a week or so again we'll have the same thing again so this here is a MIG welder and we're using the gas that goes with it the bottle does not come with it um, when you purchase it from Harbor Freight but a set of gauges does come with it the welding helmet is a auto darkening helmet also from Harbor Freight which is not included with the machine um, it was a relatively cheap helmet but works just fine no issues with that either so and you can see these leftover panels here we got one here another one here and there's one more laying over there and so first we use our old trusty little four inch craftsman grinder and we prepare the two edges so that we can actually weld <coughs> Um, not just around it, but kind of uh, will shape it at an angle and this at an angle in and then we can weld inside that V. We gotta get these lined up nicely. After that, after preparing them, line them up nicely and then weld them together. Weld all these three together, then put it up onto the livestock panels which are standing right over there, leaning against the tree. We got three more panels. We can prep two of those. We'll put them on there with the hose clamps. And these sections will be just a bit longer, just a bit over 12 feet. So we'll have to cut off a little bit of it, like another eight to 10 inches probably, but that will be fine. So this is our project for day. Let's go.
All right, I got the two panels welded now. Um, the storm is already coming in. You can see it's a little darker back there at the horizon. Um, it's been getting pretty windy, which that makes the welding harder because we're using the gas to shield the spot where we're welding to keep away the oxygen. And with the wind, this uh, starts blowing away the gas that we need for shielding. But I got through, some of the welds are not super nice. Also, this is a, a galvanized panel, so welding the galvanized makes it a little different, uh, a little tougher anyway. But I got my two panels. And now I'm gonna go ahead and attach them to those stock panels over there.
So, the storm is pretty much here now. I can see the rain over there on the hillside. Uh, the wind picked up quite a bit. I hope you can still hear me. Whoa, and there it just blew over the bigger camera. So, the wind's getting super strong and I need to clean up, put the welder back on the roof before it starts raining here. But um, I ran out of hose clamps. I almost got this panel done. I'm uh, one hose clamp short of finishing this, but the closest hardware store is 40 miles away. So we're certainly not driving there to pick up more clamps today. We'll do that when we're in town next time um, because this would be a huge waste of time and money trying to do this over the weekend just for hose clamps. Those would be expensive hose clamps. So, um, at this point, yeah, you can see I finished the panel. What you want to make sure is that you attach the hog panel always on the same side of your livestock panel because if they're pinned like these here, if you put it on the other side, but you would like the hog panel to be on the inside at all times, then you can put your panels together. And if you put your panels together and you have them on the other side, then some hog panels will be inside, some will be outside. But you want the hog panel to be on the inside so that if animals push against it, they obviously pushing the hog panel onto the stock panel. If the hog panel is on the outside and they start to push against it, they have a chance of bending this hog panel or even possibly breaking a hose clamp by putting too much stress on it. So, well, this is uh, how we do those panels. So we can uh, rotate the sheep for grazing. Um, currently we're using a 48 by 48 pen. So we have 16 panels in use right now. And we move that pen once a day on our property so that the sheep can graze and thus we get rid of weeds and uh, lower the fire danger because we don't have high grass out there as well we eliminate the hay bill during this time of the year so usually we can let them graze for about six to eight weeks on the property here um, it is a bit of work to move those panels every day moving 16 panels is quite a bit of work but with the amount of sheep we have this year, we need a pen this large. Next year we may have less sheep, um, then we can go with a smaller pen. But yeah, this was another project we done here on our little ranch um, to rotate our sheep. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please click the like button. Uh, click the subscribe button and watch our other videos. Thank you for watching. Bye.